So obviously you're going to need ATP to survive, however the ATP that is stored in the muscle is only enough for less than one second of contraction. So there has to be a system that continuously provides ATP. So basically all the ATP comes from the food that we eat. So the fatty acids, the oxygen, and the glucose that we consume actually goes into the mitochondria and produces ATP. ATP is stored in the muscle in a pretty cool way. So creatine is going to be converted to creatine phosphate and that is used to store ATP. So there are two different ways of producing ATP, anaerobic and aerobic. So aerobic obviously requires oxygen, while anaerobic does not require oxygen, but it does require the conversion of glycogen into glucose, and then glucose into carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So the motor unit, unit is a motor nerve, and all the fibers that are supplied by the motor nerve. So muscles for precise movements are going to have one neuron for every one to two muscle cells, and then muscles for non-precise movements are going to have one neuron for about 165 muscle fibers. So basically for a precise movement, you're going to have one neuron controlling a very small amount of muscle fibers, and then for the non-precise movements, you're going to have one neuron controlling a very large amount of muscle fibers. So remember that skeletal muscles do not have any spontaneous activity unless a nerve comes and gives it the message to contract. So when we sit or stand, we have what is called muscle tone. Muscle tone is continuous contraction of certain muscles to keep you in a certain position. And even though there's no spontaneous activity in the muscle cell, the presence of sensory mechanism, like the muscle spindle, monitors the activity of the muscle and relays it back to the spinal cord. The spinal cord then tells the muscle to keep working. A muscle twitch is a short contraction evoked by an action potential. So notice that the muscle twitch starts right around the time that the action potential is finished. The twitch is long lasting and does not have a refractory period, therefore a twitch can be summated. So the graphs show the frequency of muscle stimulation affecting the force of contraction. So when you increase the frequency at which you stimulate a muscle, you go from complete tetanus, incomplete tetanus as seen in the first one right here, to complete tetanus as seen in the very last graph. When you continue to stimulate a muscle, the twitch will continue to increase in size until it reaches a regulated flat line as seen right here. The graph will kind of look like stairs, with the trepe being the actual steps as seen right here. So there are two types of contraction. Isotonic is when the muscle shortens, while isometric is when the muscle does not shorten very much. So the muscle has two components in it, the contractile mechanism and the elastic component, also called the series elastic component. So within the muscle, the isometric contraction, the sarcomeres and the other individual components actually do shorten, but because of the muscle's elasticity, it doesn't really to appear to have shortened. So as mentioned before, creatine phosphate is really just a store for high energy phosphate, like ATP, and when it comes to into contact with ADP, it converts it into ATP with the help of the enzyme called creatine phosphate kinase. Seen right here. So when the muscle is injured, CPK will be released into the blood supply, indicating that injury, indicating that injury at the certain site. So the amount of ATP needed depends on the intensity of muscle contraction, and also muscle fatigue is due to lack of oxygen 
creatine phosphate, ATP, glycogen, and acetylcholine. So, how come muscle fatigue is due to lack of acetylcholine? Well, it's because when the muscle continues to contract, a whole bunch of acetylcholine is being released continuously, and it's not going to be produced fast enough or replaced fast enough. And as for oxygen, when the muscle contracts, it actually squeezes the blood from the blood vessels. Therefore, you won't have enough blood carrying oxygen to that muscle. One product of muscle contraction would be lactic acid, which is not what we want inside our blood. So how do we get rid of lactic acid? The best way would be to reuse lactic acid with oxygen and lactic acid dehydrogenase to make pyruvic acid, which can be converted to ATP and LDP. And also we can get lactic acid from into glucose by the Cori cycle. So when you work out vigorously, um, the depth of respiration increases in order to pay the oxygen debt. Also, 70% of the product of exercise is heat. Therefore, muscle as a work machine isn't really effective or efficient. So there are three types of muscles. The fast muscle is also called the white muscle because of how pale it is. It has a lot of ATP ACE activity and fatigues very quickly with a short twitch duration. And then slow muscles or the red muscles are smaller in size, contain more blood capillaries and myoglobin which has the ability to carry oxygen. And the twitch duration is also going to be a lot longer. And then the intermediate is just the middle of these two. So much muscle hytro hypertrophy is the is a non pathological thing and is it's the increase in size in muscles. While muscle atrophy is when the normal muscles decrease in size drastically. So disuse atrophy is seen in people who have one of their limbs in a cast, and once they take it off, the limb is much smaller than the other. And denervation atrophy is a decrease in muscle size due to cutting of a nerve that supplies the muscle, and this causes the acetylcholine receptors that are usually at the end plate to spread all over the muscle instead of just being concentrated at the end plate. So atrophy causes the muscle fibers to shorten themselves, so after years, the muscle just doesn't work anymore because the muscle fibers have been converted into connective tissue.